So today we are continuing our series based in the divine union of the masculine and feminine, my new book. And today we're talking about the balance or the dance or the interplay of structure and chaos. And how structure and chaos, when they dance properly in support of each other, this is how creation happens. This is how new things are born into the world. So why do we want to talk about this? So the first reason is the very word chaos, this is the feminine, brings up all kinds of negative ideas. The wildness, the crazy, it's, it's insane, it's all these things, right? As a society, because of this curious domination, the patriarchy, whatever this energy is that we've been living in for the last few millennia, this oppresses chaos at all, every turn. So it oppresses the feminine within each of us. It oppresses that chaotic element in all things, in children, in um, creative thought at work. It, it suppresses it everywhere. And this is really important because we don't understand that chaos is our creative potential. It's the wildness, and I don't. And we're talk, we'll talk about what wild means later. It's the mystery. It's all these things. It literally oppresses the very spirit of being human. Right, that candle that's alive inside of us that wants to expand and grow in in new and interesting ways. That's chaos in every one of us. And when we oppress it, where's the joy in life? Where's the newness? What separates us from a robot or a trained animal, right? That, this is the source of life, real life. So then what happens is because we ha feel all disconnected to our wild nature, which is a, a positive thing, we cling to structure of all kinds. We cling to the structure of a job we hate, of a relationship that's unhealthy, to family even, that is that it's abusive. We cling to any structure because it's all we've got because because the feminine has been discarded. What happens when we cling to unhealthy structure? Right? Unhealthy control, unhealthy advice. What happens? You know, when we put all the eggs in someone else's basket and we say, you just tell me what to do because I don't know, because we don't trust ourselves anymore. And the other thing that happens when, when structure and chaos are out of whack, if where there is actually healthy structure in our life, whether it's with a partner or a parent or even within ourselves, if we don't also have healthy chaos, healthy feminine within us, like healthy, wild nature, we will rebel against the structure. We'll rebel against things that we might actually love to do. You know, a lot of you guys have studied Kundalini Yoga with me. And when I discovered Kundalini Yoga, I discovered it online. I just randomly bought a DVD off of Amazon. And I did this DVD in my living room on the farm. My kids were young. I had, I had three dogs, two cats. They were all sitting on the, on the mat with me. I'm doing this yoga. The men are walking in and out of the kitchen, like just 10 feet over there, coming in and out from the farm, from the barn, because it was in the morning. And I'm doing this yoga and I'm vibrating. Like I'm vibrating. My spine is aligning as I'm sitting there. And I'm like, what is this? I became completely addicted. My soul was like, what is this? I need to do this yoga. This is amazing. I've never even heard of this kind of yoga. But I lived in the middle of nowhere. So I ordered every DVD that existed, every DVD that existed on Kundalini Yoga. I did it every morning because it's all I wanted to do. It wasn't some external discipline. It was the inner desire, that inner discipline. I was a disciple of whatever this was. I wanted it so much. 
But then I thought, you know, I should go away and actually study under real teachers. So I went away and I did my yoga teacher training. And the teachers are what were what I would call unhealthy structure. And they told us that every morning you had to do two and a half hours of sadhana. You had to do an hour of yoga and then you had to do these Aquarian mantras for an hour and a half after that. Or no, we had to do an hour of yo- hour and a half of yoga and then an hour of these mantras every morning. And if you don't do it, you're obviously not serious about this. And they laid this heavy guilt on us. Well, I'll tell you, my inner being rebelled so heavily, I didn't do the yoga. <laughs> like, I, I stopped doing the yoga. I stopped doing this thing that had just lit me up for like a year. <laughs> and I, it was my daily joy. I stopped doing it because they told me that I had to do it or else I was a loser. And, I, and it took me a long time to actually bring my, my, my soul back in alignment to go, Katrina, you're, you love this yoga. Forget them. So anyway, this is a huge problem. Huge problem. When all of a sudden somebody comes in theoretically with your best intentions at heart and they put a little extra advice in or they put a little extra something to kind of make you go straight and narrow and you end up rebelling against this thing that you already were doing. But you don't want it to be their idea. You don't want them to take credit for it. You know, it's all, it's a very strange dynamic. So the balance between structure and chaos is very delicate. And the key is, as in all these dynamics, is that the masculine serves the feminine. The masculine does not control the feminine. So let's, for example, look at this. This entire dynamic is is based on what you define the feminine as. In this instance, what do you define chaos as? What do you define mystery as? What do you define wildness as? Because that's what chaos is. Chaos isn't destruction. Chaos isn't the aftermath of a hurricane. Chaos isn't, oh my God, somebody like a whirling dervish running around being crazy. That's not chaos. That's crazy. That's whirling dervishes. That's, That's not it. Whirling Dervish is a weird example. Maybe Tasmanian Devil. Let's go there. Chaos is just the lack of structure. Right? Chaos is pure potential. A forest is chaos. Anything can happen. Anything can grow there. We are made up of chaos. We are a chaotic system, according to physics. Weather. These are chaotic systems. They aren't negative, but they're not controlled by our little brains. They're not controlled by the masculine. They're chaos. Untamed, wild. What does this mean to you? What does it mean if I was to say to you to access your wild self? We have this idea that that means that you're suddenly, you know, ripping your clothes off and running down the street naked and, I don't know, maybe smashing windows or having sex with 400 people this weekend or, you know, it's some kind of crazy, hedonistic, unplugged, you know, wasted thing. That this is wild. But that's what they tell us. That that's what wild is. That's what the patriarchal energy tells us. Fear the feminine Fear, you can't just unplug from us. You can't unplug from the masculine. What will happen? You're going to run out in traffic and get killed. That's insane, (laughs) right? This is what we've been taught. But when we really think about it, when you think about the difference between a horse in nature, a horse in nature is wild. What's it doing? You know, is it running around, slamming into trees and, you know, doing somersaults and jumping off cliffs because it's wild? No, it's 
totally at peace. It's eating, drinking from the stream, having sex, finding shelter, making babies. It's just wild because we don't need to be controlled. That's not a thing. Control isn't necessary in nature, in our nature. It's not necessary. This is a creation from this weird paradigm we've been living in. So what is our wild? Right? It's just us living our life according to our instincts. But then we have to ask ourselves, what do you believe? Do you believe that if you honored your instincts, if you honored your desires, if you followed your soul's desires, do you believe that's okay? Do you believe that's safe? Do you believe that you would go insane, that you would do something crazy, that you couldn't be trusted? Do you believe that your soul can be trusted? Do you believe that there is wisdom in the wildness? I believe the wildness is connected to our soul. It's connected to our purpose. It's connected to when I am in my full wild, I am connected to me. I'm fully present. Anything could happen because there's no rules. There's no overbearing structure forcing me to walk down this part of the path because I can walk anywhere and I trust my soul to go straight, to go left, to go right. That's what wild is. It just means that there's not a groove in the pavement already for you to go in. This is really, really important. Because how we perceive the feminine is how the masculine then is defined. Right? If we believe in our hearts that wild is not to be trusted, if we believe that the, the wild in our children is not to be trusted, how will the masculine show up? If we believe that the wild inside of me is dangerous, how will my masculine show up inside? And what will I allow you to do in the land of control? Right? It all is based on how we see the feminine. Chaos is pure creativity. Is that okay? What do we think of that? What do we think of pure creativity, new things, new ideas? Is that okay? Because if we are heavily attached to things remaining as they are, we don't want new ideas. Things are just fine the way we are. We have done them this way for centuries. We don't need new things. We don't need creativity, right? And it's funny because on the surface you think, well, who doesn't want creativity? Who doesn't want newness? A lot of people, a lot of people who are clinging to the structure, right? Because their own creativity wasn't allowed. Their own wildness was oppressed. So you cling to what you know, you cling to the structure and you completely squash all creativity. And of course, with creativity, there's risk. If you want to start a new business and you've got this great idea, I don't mean you want to start a business so you create a good idea. I mean you have a great idea. It has, it has risen from the chaos. It has risen, come out of you, out of nowhere. That's chaos. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Who cares? Right? What if, what if the success of something isn't based on it being financially feasible? What if the point of living is the experience of creation? The process, the journey. Chaos is our potential, right? It's our potential. It is our latent potential. And you think, well, why would anyone oppress your potential? Right? In, 
the chat earlier, you know, colonizers were mentioned. That energy lives within us. It still lives in the world. That you don't want the little people to have to be expanding. You don't want the little people learning and growing and being sovereign and having their own thoughts. Because then how do we control them? This still exists in our world. This, this, is, this permeates our entire society. Right? And again, because it goes along with this oppression of that feminine, it, when you oppress it, they then cling to structure, whether it's healthy or not. Right? How many of us truly are playing on the edge of our potential? Truly playing in that wild part inside of us every day. So then what does structure look like? So we, we can understand the negatives here, right? We can understand, we, we know what the, the oppressive structure has looked like if we believe the feminine is insane or chaotic in a bad way or wild in an un, unrealistic way or whatever. We know what that looks like. So then what does it look like in a healthy way? Masculine is stillness. Right? You even imagine in the world, imagine you're walking down the street. So I remember in 2011, we had a big tornado here in Goddard. And once Taylor and I crawled out of our basement and the whole neighborhood was gone, we walked down the streets and it was, it was wild and it was chaos. But again, not in a negative way. It, it, because again, we have all this judgment. It was just the structure was pulled apart, right? Homes were destroyed, the, everything was, it was absolutely wild. People were crying, cars were, sm everything. Trees were all up, ended, blah, blah, blah. What is the healthiest thing to do when surrounded by chaos? You walk down the street in stillness, in quiet inside. And you observe it. And it's almost as wild as it is out there, the more still you become inside. And from that stillness, you can actually experience what's happening around you. If you dive into the chaos, what happens? Right? And maybe you have to for a time. Right? I mean, we all were pretty traumatized being inside the tornado. <laughs> right? And sometimes you've got to cry and you've got to do the things and you've got to, you know, get in there and, and heal all those emotional things. But balance comes when we can be still. When we can actually start to say, okay, what's the plan? That structure. What do we do now? And what was really interesting is from that, and Godridge kind of needed to be broken open. It was really dying and pretty old school and the tornado really kind of uprooted things and really interesting things were built inside of that right stillness the masculine stillness is why we meditate so if you for me like I've told you guys like I love to teach meditation and I love to do meditation and pranayama practice but my favorite, my most helpful meditation is when my world is spinning for some reason. There's too many irons in the fire. Everything's just going too quickly and I'm trying to focus on too many things. I will sit down on my couch, not in some perfect yogic position, and I will sit there and breathe. And I will develop stillness inside. I will develop quiet inside. I will become the center of the hurricane. And eventually, I come to center. I come to quiet. And all of a sudden, nothing changed on the outside, right? I remember doing this a lot on the farm. We had a big dairy farm. We had children. We had foster kids. We had, it was a huge, none of that was changing. My life wasn't changing. 
But I had gotten overwhelmed because I had lost my center. I had lost my inner structure inside a very, very busy life, right? It wasn't about changing the external life. It was about finding this strong masculine inside of me to be able to navigate it. And from that strong masculine, you can start to hear guidance again, right? You can start to hear, ah, oh, yes, okay, I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll do this. Our emotions are chaos, not in a negative way, in a wise way, right? Our emotions tell us things. Our emotions tell us, is this situation okay? Should I be moving on? Or is this a great situation and I should be diving in? That's what our emotions tell us. If those emotions get caught up in our brain and our brain starts analyzing them and adding stories, which then create other emotions and then bring up other old memories and all this stuff, suddenly you have no idea what you want anymore. You can't even access the original emotion. You can't access that original bit of wisdom that rose because our brains got in there and tried to control them, right? Not allowed to feel this, can't get angry, can't do this, all that stuff, right? So what do we do? We sit quietly and we meditate and we breathe deeply and we find that deep center. Then we can feel the emotions again. And we ask ourselves, how do I really feel about this? Do I want to do this? Yes or no? And the answer will come to you instantly. You may not like the answer, but the answer will come in the stillness. You'll be able to actually read the chaos. It's so, so powerful, this inner stillness. It's the same thing if a friend is struggling and their emotions are high or there's a lot of moving parts in their life. What's the best thing we can do? Dive into it with them? Or we show up and we say, what can I do? Can I help? I'm still. I'm here. And they're like, ah. Oh. Like one of my favorite things is if somebody, like maybe it's one of my kids or someone, in, and they're just, they're just overworked, they're overwrought, so many things are going on and their place is just whatever gone to hell in a handbasket you know my favorite thing is like do you want help and I'll come over and I'll go okay you know what I'm gonna do this you know and then you can do everything else in between because this is your space but I'll, I'll do this and this and this and they're like okay and you can create kind of nice structure that you can both flow inside of right and then they do their thing I do our my thing and then everything's done. But I don't go in all like chaotic, right? I go in in my masculine. And then we have a great time together. Yeah. Structure can be the container for chaos. Now I don't mean con containers kind of in air quotes because it's not container like I want to contain the chaos. Right, I want to limit the chaos, so I need to contain it. That's not what I mean. A container is more like a place for the chaos to thrive. You know? So again, back to the idea of someone struggling, right? Maybe I'm having an emotional deep dive, breakdown, whatever you want to call it. A friend, you know, we talk about holding space for someone. This is creating a container for me to dive deep into my emotions. That I know that this person is there for me and they've created a container. Maybe they've closed the doors, no one's allowed in, phones are off. Okay, now a container is created, let's go. In no way is this meant to lessen the emotions, right? In no way is it meant to stop the process, stop the chaos. In fact, the safe container allows you to go deeper into it. That's what a container is. In the same way it could be for an artist, right? You want to just dive deep into the process so you go you know what 
I'm going to rent a cabin. I'm going to take all my stuff because I can't go deep into the chaos. I can't go deep into the wisdom, the wild, the mystery. I can't go deep in if I've got kids asking for orange juice every five seconds. I need to go and just allow it to flow. So you create a container for that to happen. This is masculine structure, right? Structure can be the creation of a plan, right? This is like inside. I've got this idea and you brainstorm. Maybe I love brainstorming with my friends. Okay, I've got this idea. What do you guys think? Well, it could be this, it could be that. Oh yeah, that's possible. What about this? What about that? And you do this whole like chaotic brainstorming. Like there's no brainstorming without chaos, right? You, you need that creative wild thing, which is why when you're brainstorming, you never say no. It's like, it's like improv. One of, the ans one of the rules of improv is you always say yes and. Someone does something, you don't stop them. You stay, use that and take that energy and flow with it. And then you flow with it and you flow with it. And that's what allows the big energy to rise. And that's where the new ideas are allowed to be released. This is what we need to be able to do. We need to allow ourselves to fly. We need to allow ourselves to go wild. And then all of a sudden something will go, aha, this is the answer. My masculine says, is it? This is it? This is what you want? This is it? Okay, got it. And the masculine jumps in and starts creating spreadsheets and creating whatever and finding whatever programs you need or finding the help you need. You know, this is how it works together. This is how creation happens. Real creation happens from that wild seed and then the masculine container and the support and the nourishment to make it happen. So let's talk about parenting, because this is a huge thing. And this is not only if you are a parent, this, is, this matters, but we were all parented at some point. And how we were treated by our parents, and this isn't about, this isn't going against our parents or even going against ourselves and how we parented, right? We're all swimming in this curious soup and we all do the best job we can. So this isn't some big judgment. Part of the theory of the feminine in this curious patriarchal domination paradigm that we've all lived in is that children are what we call tabula rasa, blank slates, here to be formed, here to be, you know, drawn upon and molded into whatever they need to be. And if we don't do that, they're going to become wild. They're going to come crazy. They're going to be uncivilized. <laughs> right? What do we believe? And this is really important for each one of us to ask ourselves. What do I believe the nature of a child is? The nature of a newborn? Do I believe that if left their own devices, they would go crazy? They would be of no earthly good to society, to people, to con maybe they wouldn't be of any good to society because that's a pretty big structure. But what would happen? And again, I don't mean throwing them out in the middle of the wild without any masculine structure, right? That's how we are. That's how we end up ourselves. You know, this isn't like children of the corn or something like that where you just throw them out there. And crazy things happen. Crazy things happen because there was no solid structure. There was none of this container, the nourishment, the love, the kindness. Right? What if instead, every single one of us, imagine all of us as children right now. Like we talk about, we've talked a lot about the ideas of reparenting ourselves. Okay? So imagine you right now, who you are right now, are, is a newborn child. Because we are. Every one of us is in a, a state of perpetual growth. We can literally become anything we want. Whether we're in our 54th year 
or our first year. We are all brand new in this moment. What do we believe about ourselves? Do we believe that there is a seed, a divine seed inside of us that we are meant to grow into? Do we believe that, you know, if you look at an acorn in North America, we have oak trees. I don't know if they have them in other places. And the acorn is the seed. That acorn is planted and within that is a design, a, ma a blueprint that no matter what, that acorn's gonna grow into a mighty oak. Unless, of course, it's planted in a cave or it's planted where there's very little sunlight or not enough water or not enough earth for it to spread its roots. Then how is it gonna grow? It may not even look like an oak. It may have the leaves of an oak, but you'd never know what an oak tree, oak trees are huge. They're huge and they grow to be monstrous. They're wonderful trees. Do we believe that we were once an acorn? Do I believe right now that there are seed cells, stem cells inside of me right now that hold my official blueprint? So then the question becomes, as parents, What's our role? What's our masculine role with that seed? <clears throat> it's to create this container. How do I nourish the seed? Not guide the seed. Not tell the seed what to do. Not civilize the seed. How do I nourish? Do I trust that that seed has wisdom of its own? But that seed has to grow into whatever it's meant to grow into. My only job is to make sure there's food on the table, love, kindness, safety, support. Or do I believe that children are crazy and they need to be controlled, they need to be punished? Because realize how much this reflects on us today. Do I believe that my inner self is insane and crazy and if left unchecked will just, you know, do nothing and eat bonbons and urinate in the street or something. What do I, what do I think will happen to me if left unchecked? Because whatever we believe about the child-parent dynamic there is our inner being. And this is really, really important because we're gonna shift right now into our inner experience of our own inner chaos and our own inner structure. What does your inner masculine look like? Is it controlling? Are you always coming up with a plan to control your feminine, to morph your feminine into something? Okay, here's the plan. Here's what we're gonna do. Or do we listen within to what brings us joy? Do we listen and then create a structure that supports that joy? Which is more important to you? The masculine controlling ourselves <clears throat> or the feminine expressing and the, the masculine supporting it? It's a really, really important question. What about mystery? Chaos is mystery. You have no idea. Are you okay with that? And this is a really important question. Are we okay with mystery within ourselves? That I don't know how I'm going to feel tomorrow. I don't know what my desires will be tomorrow. Can I live with that kind of dynamic change? Is that possible? Or am I like, no, 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 you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna make stuff up. I, I don't want mystery. I don't want me to be mysterious. I wanna be able to promise that, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna feel this way forever. I'm gonna stay with this job forever. I'm gonna stay in this relationship forever. I'm gonna eat this way forever. I'm gonna exercise this way forever. I'm gonna believe this about this forever. This is what I am forever. 
No mystery allowed. No change allowed. It's a very interesting thing. Like we have really had this kind of beaten into us that the feminine is dangerous. Look at even look at even our marriage vows, right? I promise to feel this way forever. What if you don't? What if you wake up one day? The other person doesn't have to do anything at all, and they just you just wake up one day and you realize, wow, your soul is on a different path now. And again, what do you believe? Do you believe that's even possible? Is that just a crazy thing that I'm saying? Right? Again, this has nothing to do with me. This is just a question is, do you believe that that's the spirit? Like, can we have a change of heart? Can I feel differently about this? Can I change my mind? Is that okay? It's an important question because <clears throat> however you see that, is how you see the feminine. Because of course, part of the big deal here is we also believe that where there is chaos, we need punishment. Punishment will curb the chaos in the future, right? That's the key. If, if, and we do this to ourselves. I'm not even talking, we can talk about our childhoods and we can talk about parenting, but we do this to ourselves. We do something that we don't understand and then we punish ourselves. We would berate ourselves for it. What happens instead if we honor the feminine? And we dive into that not understanding. And instead of punishing ourselves, we look at it and say, well, that's interesting. Why would I do that? Why, why did that happen? And then we allow ourselves to go deeper because as soon as we don't have that controlling punishment mind, that judgment mind on it, something opens up in our hearts and it's like we're allowed to go deeper, right? Because we're not allowed to go deeper if the punisher is in the room, right? If the punisher is in the room, we've got to stay tight. But as soon as someone says, okay, I really want to talk about this. I want to listen. We exhale and we go deeper. We're able to go deeper because now we have stillness. We have support. We have openness. And the last thing I want to talk about, there's some weird archetypal patterns that we can fall into in this structure and chaos in relationship. And the first one is like father-daughter. And this, this, this is obviously I'm talking male-female, but it doesn't have to be male-female. It could be same sex. It's the energy of father-daughter. And the energy of father-daughter is where the daughter is always this perpetual child, right? Perpetual chaos, perpetual anything. I am just anything I want. I can do anything. I don't ever have to be my own masculine structure. And then I find this person who will actually sort of play daddy. And again, this could be same-sex couples. It could be anything. But it's this very curious dynamic where the person who's playing the father role wants to sort of guide and control and do all these sort of things and oh well I've set this up for you and I've done this for you and I've done this for you and all this kind of thing. One might think this is structure chaos and maybe people dig it and I'm not judging that but what we're talking about is healthy dynamics where each person is whole unto themselves but in these cases this is extremely codependent because the one person who's playing daddy, their chaos plays out through the, the girl. Or, and again, I'm, I'm saying it this way because this is how it plays out in, in family, right? But they're continuing this father-daughter dynamic from a child-adult child perspective. And that can happen, all, all kind, it can happen on either side. It can happen where someone just wants to be the child all the time and they all, all actually expect 
the other person to take care of the finances and take care of this and take care of all those. Oh, I don't want to think about those things. You do all that, right? And sometimes we just split up chores in a way that we like, but there's an energy about it. There's an energy that doesn't allow either person to be whole, right? If someone's forced into the father role, they may not want it. They may not want to have all the responsibility. They may not want to have all the choices. They may actually want to have a partner who's in on the discussion with them. And on the flip side, if you're dating someone who only wants to be in that fatherly role, you might be like, I don't need a daddy. I just need a partner. I don't want you to control me. I don't want you to set it all out for me. I don't want you to do that. I'm not a child, right? So sometimes it can get a little confused there. The other one, and this is a really curious flip, is the mother-son archetype. And again, this could be in a same-sex couple, this could be anything. But this is where the son person actually plays out the childlike chaos. And the mother holds the masculine. And you do see this a lot in heterosexual relationships where the woman is the mom and they and women joke about this right they'll say well i birthed three i have four kids three i birthed and one i married and it's and it's, i'm not a man hater god knows i love men this isn't a thing but this is an archetype that plays out in relationships partly because the, the polarities have been un, unhealthily flipped because those women would maybe in their hearts love to actually be in the feminine. But maybe historically they couldn't have. It wasn't safe. And so they just simply, you know what, it's easier to be in control, it's easier to get things done if I just do it. Then they marry someone who falls into that line and who will happily be passive and just roll along in her, you know, coattails. And so they play out this mother-son dynamic where the mother is the structure and the son is the chaos. But similarly, one, they flipped polarities if it's a heterosexual couple, but even in a same-sex couple, oftentimes the one playing mom actually wants to be in the feminine. Because it's the only reason they're playing mom is because it's their maternal instincts that are actually rising to take care of the child. And that child actually likely should be in the masculine. So their journeys are actually to flow back in that the whoever's playing son could be a woman in a same-sex couple you know it's not it's not this isn't so heterosexual based but that person actually needs to rise into the masculine and the one playing mom actually has to learn how to relax and receive in the feminine and not be in that controlling space and it's very interesting to watch these dynamics play out because those are the big ones energetically that play out in relationships, whether we call them that or not. So it's just interesting to kind of see those because the key always is to come back into our own self that every single person is whole, structure and chaos inside of us then when we go out and we find someone, we can then polarize in a healthy way and then come back into our wholeness. So thank you so much for being here and I hope you have a wonderful day.